Hello, everybody, all over the world. Hello, and welcome to High GPS number 146, The Conjurer. And finally, unlike the shortstop, this weapon, or should I say backpack, is actually really fun. It has stats we can understand, and it works in a way that we understand. So, uh, for uh, since uh, this is for you YouTubers, this is what you missed in the pre-show. So I'm in a pretty good mood. That video is from Mini Rose's YouTube. I suggest you check it out because it's awesome. Uh, way more awesome than this episode is going to be, but uh, that's two different levels of awesome. So the Conjurer is a very interesting weapon indeed. Uh, the main fact is, you know, the other backpacks, you know, they all got changed and stuff like that, except the buff banner is pretty much the same. However, the buff banner and the, um, what's it called, uh, Battalion's Backup, both require you to do 600 points worth of damage before they fill the rage bar and you can use them. With this thing, it's only 480. And the effects of this weapon is, of course, you run faster. So if we just take a look at the chart, because I like charts, I guess, is that, um, you know, in T-Virus 2, you have, each classes have speeds, right? So your speed is a number. You can see this if you type CL underscore show pause, it shows velocity, which is your speed, I guess. So a scout moves at 400, it's the fastest, soldier at 240, pyro 300, Devilman 280, heavy 3, 230, engineer 300, medic 320, sniper and spy 300. So with this boost, uh, uh, scouts get the least boost. He gets 26%, so he runs at 505. Soldiers run at 336. Pyro 405, Devilman 385, heavy 322, and engineer 405. 425 for the medic, 405 for a sniper and spy. However, a sniper gets 40% boost movement if he's in scope. So he actually, yeah. So speed boost is nice, and you also get a little bit of health back when you shoot people. On hit, you do get 35% of your damage dealt. You get that back as health, which is uh, always nice. Uh, but this weapon requires something that isn't always present on a Team Forest 2 server, which is... One, teamwork and strategy. Those two elements are very often not present at all on those servers. Yes. So, uh, without further ado, let's just go in. We got a lot of replays sent uh, today compared to uh, the last shortstop one. So this is definitely going to be uh, good. So let's just start off here. We're going to be looking at Chopper. Submitting a replay here, and he is currently a ghost. Let's take a look at his loadout. Uh, I've been playing a lot with his loadout myself. Uh, the reason for this, I will get to in a minute. But we have Chopper here. Try to be the Conchador, there it is. Uh, you don't actually see it in a replay system because it's kind of bugged. But when it's active, you get like this white flag popping up from it. It's pretty cool. So, uh, 480 damage. That means you have to kill a heavy and uh, a soldier that has lost uh, 20 health, I guess. Because math that I'm not very good at. So this is Pale of Barn Splits. We have the trio of snipers in the back. And uh, for this weapon, you gotta like think to yourself, which class could benefit the most from movement and health on hit? Like what classes get the most out of that, you know? And uh, the right answer is pyros and heavies, because uh, they have very high damage uh, output when they start doing the damage. So I think maybe pyro is the one that comes out on top of this one, because uh, it does that. There you go. Blow the horn, get health back. You just move faster, allowing you to position yourself where you want to be. Getting closer, faster, meaning you can do, do more damage faster. And you're also harder to hit, and uh, you get health back, which means you're a bit more resilient. And uh, keep in mind, uh, you know, it's per damage dealt. So if you fire, like, a rocket... Like, let's say you fire a cr rocket, and you kill, like, four guys in that rocket, you're gonna have a full... full bar. So we have Chopper blowing the horn once again, or the... the oyster or seashell. Can you hear the pain from all the trouble you're gonna cause through the... if you put your ear to the... F fuck, that joke sounded better in my head. But you know what I mean, like, can you hear the ocean? 
It's like, can you hear the cries of the other team? Maybe. So just hanging out. So if we look at his team, uh, Chopper can work with another soldier, and a couple of pyros, and a demo man, and then there's like really nothing else because you don't really want to use that with snipers primarily. You want to use them with power classes, classes that can do a lot of damage, that can do some heavy lifting. But then again, we also see Chopper using the very uh, standard uh, of soldier play, which is just stand on the high ground. So, um, yeah, just doing the pot shots. He's currently defending, so that's why he's not, you know, moving all the way over here and, and doing the stuff, because he's just like, well, I'm going to defend the carts here. I'm not going to go any further. I'm very comfortable on this high ground area, and he blows the horde once again. And he's going to move forward. Does he have teamwork with him? Oh, he's currently alone. Let's see. Come on. Let's pop. Sonic. Right to go. Right to go. Teamwork. There we go. I remember that one. Teamwork. So, like, without teamwork and just running around willy nilly using this item, you're not going to achieve much. But with, you know, with proper teamwork. Everybody's gonna say it's completely broken. Which means it's good. Then apparently somebody fights like a girl. Says so the guy with the huge rocket launcher. Killing everything. So, uh, yeah, just doing fairly well and defending here. Of course, the other team, not at any point in time, is ever going to acknowledge uh, Chopper's existence here. And there's going to be like, well, I think, you know, the, the, the sensations of rockets hitting my sides, I think that's just like a phase I'm going through. Don't necessarily think that's anything I should turn around for or anything like that. And uh, Chopper generally just doing pretty well. He's just been rotating around this area, hanging around this high ground and, and grabbing the health and blowing the, the horn. Which is uh, pretty good. Keep in mind that, uh, you know, if your opponents are uh, covered in Jurati, you heal more. Or if you, like, do something completely unorthodox and coordinate, like, a Contra push with, like, a buff banner, you're gonna heal more because of the mini crits and stuff like that. So, very much teamwork oriented item for the soldier. It kind of gives you, like, that leading charge and. Uh, I have to say, playing with this, I really felt like, you know, I'm like the captain, I'm like leading the team into battle, and we're like rushing forward, and there's like no coward cowards on our team. Because, like, face it, we've all played with those kind of players who are like, I don't want to ruin my stats, so I'm just going to stay here and we're safe and not die ever. But with this thing, it's like, attack, hit him hard. So now we're going to be seeing someone else, and this is Spitfire, and he's actually going to be using the Liberty Launcher. Uh, I also, like, experimented a lot with uh, different rocket launchers uh, and using the Contra, and I found, like, I got the best results using the stock rocket launcher. Uh, if you remember the video I did a while back with the buff banner Liberty Launcher, that is no longer as effective because the Liberty Launcher did get a buff, no nerf. <laughs> the opposite. Yeah, it got a nerf. It now has four rockets and 25% less damage per rocket, which means um, you like if you only fire three rockets, you're gonna get less damage output than if you fire all four. But you do damage faster, so it's not as good as it used to be. So uh, we had a little blowing of the horn here, just hanging out. This is a very good like composition uh, he got here. Let's see if we could take a look at his. Oh, whoops. Alright, so he is partly ghost, okay? That's what he is, he's partly ghost. There we go, here we have Spitfire looking very classy, I have to say. So yeah, we've seen this, uh, shooting going up here, going back down. Alright, so this is where he's at. He takes out a spy. Uh, I found like the Liberty Launcher to be a bit more spammy, but not as reliable as before. So here he is, just doing that, doing the pot shots. Not really achieving all that much, because, you know, you gotta be closer, and you do less damage, which means you heal, and 
I'm not the, like you don't really achieve that much because they have a lot of heavies here and uh, kind of hard to deal with. So, but he has a friendly heavy here. He has a demo man and a pyro. So, uh, like the contra really like shines when you're getting close to your enemies. It's not like the buff banner where you can just stay like further away and get the mini crits and some of the damage fall off to uh, you know your your advantage. Um, so you you can't necessarily use the conjurer like the buff banner, and I think because of that basis that you simply just can't use the two the same way. A lot of players are like oh buff banner is better. Is generally uh, a lot of ideas players have, but uh, I'll, I'll get into this like more further into the episode. And he's like oh yeah, oh fuck okay reposition door was closed I'm behind enemy lines fucking getting close and personal. Get the medic with the crits, taking him out. Don't kill the heavy, let him live for some reason. And then eventually turn around and kill him. It's the first time you ever get denied by a door and uh... Like... Dude, thanks to the... You know, speed boost of this contrary, you allowed him to, you know, move around. The corners, move very fast. And eventually die to sticky bombs. So... We're starting to get like an idea of how this weapon works. It works best with teamwork. Thank you, Wesker. Works best with teamwork, and like you don't do more damage, but you can survive more, and you can generally approach things uh, like you uh, you couldn't before. And let's take a look at this. This is actually very interesting. We have the wonderful duo of M1 W M1 plus W or plus W M1. Uh, and they're actually going to be playing double soldiers. And they're both going to be using the same loadout. Which I am currently using. And that is... They both use the half side Toichi, which is a weapon, you know, the samurai sword for the soldier. That if you kill somebody with it, you gain all your health back. But if you whip it out and you don't kill anybody, you can't switch weapons. So it's kind of like if you don't get the kill, you're absolutely fucked. So they're going to be doing the double um, Contra. And here's the thing, if you teamwork it properly and both soldiers are running it, you can pretty much chain it as long as you want. And here he comes. Okay. We have the slowest moving camera of all time, but that's okay. We're just going to move it up and uh, we're going to take a little look here. So here they come. Double soldier action coming in, destroying that demo man. Taking out this pyro as well. One guy got his uh, half side Tochi out and uh, both have them act out actually. And one is allowed to switch weapons because he did get the kill. And... Uh, the other guy, not so much. He's like, well, I, was, I have a weapon. I want to cut somebody. So I can switch weapons again because I'm bound by honor. And there we go. Second uh, wave of the Conjurer. Got to be moving up here. There's a demo man inside. Got to be moving forward. Taking him out with a direct rocket and uh, increased speed boost really helps, but uh, not against snipers, I think. Huntsman, actually. Wait, well, uh, let's see that again. Okay, so. Alert. The control point is being tested. Get the sniper. Oh. Wait. That, that's how it goes, apparently. Was that the end of it? Yeah, that was the end of it. Like, I, in this episode, I really could not get, like, the perfect replays to showcase just how incredibly powerful this weapon is. But we got, we get a couple of glimpses, right? We get a couple of glimpses of awesomeness, and I think the more people play with it, and the more people get used to it, it we're going to be seeing it more and more. So let's see if I can find the next replay because we got a lot of them this time, and the invent uh, the system of viewing replays is not as good as I'd want it to be. But I found the replay anyway, so that's good. 
So, like, the main problem with this thing is that people don't know that it gives you a speed boost because they haven't seen this item enough, and because of that lack of knowledge, it's actually gonna hurt the play. So here we have Goes is on. Uh, Samir and dude. And, um... Like, if players don't know if you stand close to the soldier, you get a speed boost, they're not gonna stand close to the soldier because they don't know, right? So, like... Most most players of Team Fortress 2 never seek knowledge. They basically just turn whatever kind of uh, inputs they get from society and just turn that off and just go all zombie mode and like never think or or do anything uh, with it whatsoever. And the few players who will actually know how the Conjurer works is players who watch it used like here in this, this uh, episode or you know play with it themselves. But if you don't do that and you never use it, you're never gonna know how fucking good it is. So, you know, you should experiment with all weapons, more or less. And, uh, from my experience, this weapon does not work as well on defense as it does on offense. So here we have uh, Goes On, doesn't really give a crap about that sentry, and it's gonna take everything out, and, uh, doing shooting up is generally very hard as a soldier, and, oh, here we go, blow the horn! Quick, quickly, let's, uh, uh fuck. So, um, you can still get absolutely brutalized and murdered uh, using this weapon. It's not like, I have this on, I am invincible, you cannot touch me, and they just go, well, I just can kill that mother. So, uh, once again, we have uh, Goes on. Four dominations, apparently, on the blue team. For the gates to open. He's gonna be using the whip because he can speed while he speeds. He can whip people with the contrary. I am not sure if that gives you additional speed boost. I guess that's for the Team Fortress 2 Mythbusters to figure out. Myth. While under the contrary's effect, if you whip somebody, they run faster. Plausible, confirmed, or busted. So gates are open. And goes on is considering his options. Oh, I'm just gonna be shooting up, shooting at this scout that is eventually getting away because scouts are fast. Solar is slower shit, unless you, you know, rocket jump like there. Standing on the high ground, shooting down, very nice basics there. Just gonna, oh, look at that nice cluster of players. They're actually getting a lot of splash damage, and then, uh, because Valve thinks it's a stupid idea to have a HUD on a replay system, we can't actually see how much charge he has. So we're just gonna assume he has enough at this point. But you gotta look for an opening, and what I usually do is uh, I reload all my rockets and then I blow the horn. And similar to the buff banner and uh, battalion's backup, you can hold it for as long as you like after you've blown it. If you like blow the horn and uh, you just hold it, you will just hold it, and when you let go, it's when it's activated. You can't switch weapons though, I think. So he's now on the cart with the rest of his team. Looking pretty good, soldiers everywhere. Lots of rockets, and uh, now you have a bunch of like you have a bunch of guys clustered together, which is good. So we're gonna see how this pans out. You know, will they stick together? Because some of the servers I played on was like, all right, I got fucking contra buff, let's go, and they're like, split up team. Roger that. So this is goes on right here. So he has the contra currently. Well, we have another soldier with the buff banner. Here you go. He blows the horn. Everybody has the buff thing. Are they running forward? Not as much as they should. You can see they're splitting up a bit, and the other soldier aren't like really aware of this, but uh, hey, they do get a lot of movement. Look how fast they run. Holy shit. This... What really wanted me to do this episode is that I saw this happen once, where like three soldiers came running with the contractor and with the medic, and they critzed in, and they just completely demolished everything. It's like a steamroller with like a fucking turbo jet thing at the back. One of those engines that's like really fast. So, uh, being in the front, once again as a soldier, keep going forward until you see the enemy and try to make like a line where you don't fall back further. So right now they're kind of uh, really far ahead to compared to where the cart is. There's a spy behind you goes on, but that's okay because we got Uber and we're invincible. And we're gonna be shooting the feet of this fat man and get reflected by this pyro, our only weakness. Darn, okay, we're gonna be... keep attacking eventually, yes! Doing the rockets, yeah, taking him out. Another soldier with a Kritzkrieg! How dare you kill us! With the direct hit. 
So currently the issue with the weapon, like I've stated, is that people aren't aware that standing close to you and just going like all out attack mode kicks so much ass and you should do it all the time. Uh, so let's see, let's move on to the next one. So we're going to be looking at some bit more of like going in as a group, right? Because when you go as a group, you kind of like death ball it. So this is me playing with the black box. I'm still like experimenting which loadout is going to use. I'm like, I'm going to use the black box so I can heal while I heal. Uh, and like you got to keep in mind, like there's one thing you generally don't want to do in Team Fortress 2, and that is cluster together in a big ball, like a big death ball, like because you can run through each other, you can actually just stand inside of each other and just shoot and do a lot of damage, like as a big blob unit, I guess. But the bad thing is that like splash damage classes and pyros just chew through you really easily. So like, I guess like one of the weaknesses for if you go a contra push and you run like in a death ball kind of thing, is that like a random crit or like a crit streak demo man is just gonna fuck your shit up, like literally. But uh, if they don't if you don't care, you can just attack at any point in time. You can do this. Oh, look at this. Look. Oh, oh, look at this. We have a demo man. He's good. We have a soldier. He's good. We have a pyro. We got two medics, which is like as hot as two girls in the group. I guess whatever. And we're like, all right, I'm going to blow the horn. We got one guy splitting up. And we're like, okay. 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 We have to see ourselves in this one. Okay, so here we are. Sonic Boom! Sonic Boom. Alright. Guile. Here we come! We're together as a group, we go down and we've... We, okay... We had a Pyro somewhere, I don't know where he went. We had a Demo Man, he's here, he's not where you need to be, and currently it's just us three. And I'm Ubered, so I'm... I, I'm Ubered. So we just run really fast, and... The super combo that once were isn't anymore because uh, we, we split up and now we're kind of all over the place and it kind of just fell apart and then we died. Which really fucking sucks. So a general tip of everybody who plays TF2 is to pay attention to whatever the fuck your team is doing. Because you will do better that way. So, uh, this is uh, still me, and I'm going to use the Liberty Launcher here, and I'm going to be doing this on defense. And we're just going to be going forward uh, towards the uh, the gates here until they open. Alright, so we got a Chris Creek. Here we go! One rocket, two rocket, boosh! Let's take a look at the death and carnage. Oh, look at this! Boosh. Boosh. Oh, yeah. And they were like, alright. Okay, we got a full charge. We are here with the rest of our team. Gonna be blowing this and just holding it for a while, just teasing it. And alright, attack the medic. Get in position. Taking out the soldier, alright. And I just shoot some rocks there, and yeah. So, whoa, was that a sniper? Yep! That was a sniper. Three of them, in fact. Myth confirmed. They got snipers. Just letting you know, they got snipers. What I've had the most effect with this weapon is probably with heavies. Uh, heavies who generally know what they're doing. Because if you play with Contra a lot and you suddenly some see someone else using the Contra, you should really like stick together and, and, and do that and kind of like work this synergy thing. But if you have a couple of friends that you like to play with, uh, definitely give this a, you know, give this a try. Because it's so fun and you kick so much ass and you just get like, yeah, teamwork is the best. And I'm like, oh, I see a heavy. And right now he's like, I'm not sure if he knows that I am have the Contra or, or not, but I'm just going to go close to him and just assist him like this. So that means he's going to get heals while he heals. He's going to be pretty hard to kill. He's also moving faster and now we have an Uber and, you know, he moves faster. So that's like the other aspect, like the main aspect of this weapon is not necessarily the heal factor, like, like you heal, it's that you move faster and that movement really can out 
maneuver power. So if the enemy team has more power but you have more movement, uh, you will generally just be able to outposition and outmaneuver your opponents and um, generally kick a lot of ass with this. So, but sometimes it can also be pretty strange for the players who are playing this. Getting this is suddenly like, why, why do I run faster? It's like, whoa, I don't get this. And then they kind of run too fast compared to what they're comfortable with. And then they just kind of like end up like overshooting or overrunning and running outside the map and just falling into pits and crap like that. But I found like for me, the most efficient loadout for using the Contrar is standard stock rocket launcher and the half side Tochi because the half side Tochi is just fucking awesome. We're going to be seeing that later. So, uh... As for the Conjurer, I find it working the best with Kritzkrieg, actually, because if you use it during a Kritzkrieg, you're actually gonna get, like, you do 104 damage per rocket, right? So, um, uh, let's see, oh, whoops. Let's see here, math. Hold on. I got this, I got this. Mission begins in 30 seconds. Never mind. You get like, I guess, for every rocket you get like 20 health, something like that. Because you do 104 per rocket, and if you hit more in the splash you're actually going to heal. So, and you move faster, which means you're going to rocket jump further, and you can generally out position yourself. Go. Gates are about to open. We're about to start. And we get hit here. I'm just gonna fall back. We have a heavy in the front as well. Here on pillar upward on defense. This weapon generally works best on offense because that's really when you know positioning move uh, movement works. So on defense, I would recommend the buff manner just simply because you know it, it's better for holding stuff. And. Uh, the medic gives the crits to heavy, the heavy gets headshot, and we're kind of stuck here with the engineer. Who decides to build, you know, here? So, in case at any point in time there's a soldier who just says, Man, I'm just gonna shoot this little thing here and cause splash damage to all your buildings. You can. So, we got two of them. And now we're like, oh shit, heavy, alright, activate the speed boost. Let's see if we can use this to our advantage. Alright, so we get some heals, taking him out, getting shot, reposition. Doing some damage. When we have to reload, we fall back, kind of, or just stay in in the mix, so to say. Staying in there and uh, doing rockets, shooting down. I being a bit careful, doing the defending thing. Because I find it like uh, I'm a very spammy soldier. I'm not. I use a lot of rockets, way more than I should. And for my style, it really works well of building up this uh, this bar. So. And sometimes you get away like, should I stop reloading or, or should I just, you know, blow the horn and do like stuff like that? So, getting the right window of opportunity to use this properly is just like something you have to try for yourself. And like this sniper, we get crits here and where we get heals as well, while we we, you know, have the boosts active and we get a lot of health back and making us really resilient to take a lot of damage and a lot of hits. Kind of like I guess you could say a tank outfit. Because you're your tank, armored, whatever. So, Devil Man, I think we'll be seeing him again, but not today, Mr. Skullbuster Man. And then we're just gonna hang out here. So, pretty standard soldier defense so far. Using this again, and uh, we have our medic here, and uh, just wait until the right time, just teasing it, and then we. Uh, I don't know, we fell or we got shot or something. Doesn't make us invis invincible. But Kritzkrieg with the Contrarer, pretty good. And also, you know, when you run faster, you kind of freak out your opponents more because they go, Oh my god, they're fast! So this is still me. We're going to be here on... Let's see if I can fix this. Yeah! That's better! <laughs> Yeah, seems to be uh, more errors with the replay system, that's fine. 
Let's get to speed this one up ever so slightly. So we're just gonna run out. And this is a nucleus. Oh, it's another demo man. Come here. Yeah. Taking him out. I do think you have longer range as well on half side touch. I'm not entirely sure. But getting all your health back from a melee kill is definitely something I want to get used to. And if you don't get the kill, well, you're absolutely fucked. Because you'll be running around the field with a sword, and you'll be really slow, and you can't switch weapons, and uh, you're just going to die, so... Very high risk and high reward kind of weapon. Which is uh, generally how I like to play. Oh, Pyro! Hey, check out my speed bonus! Yeah! Getting another one with half Satoshi. Anyone who wants melt? Yeah, take that, sentry! Oh, fuck, a heavy shit, 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 shit! Oh! Fuck. Yeah, I'm going from the chat that Saitochi has regular melee range. That's fine. So, having speed boost really works, and it's kind of like the Contra rewards you for getting close and personal, and the half Saitochi also rewards you for getting close and personal. And if you get, if you get like a really good game feel of how much health your opponents have left, uh, you can, you know, kill them with one single hit. And one thing that is important to note that if you... It, it's not until it's completely shedded, it, like freezes you to only use that weapon. So you can actually switch pretty fast until it gets like up here and then you can't switch anymore. So you can actually change your mind if you do it pretty quickly. So it's pretty good. And it was this! Snipers! Come here! Market Gardener. This is the new Market Gardener. There you go. And one rocket. Come here! Come here. Yeah! Yeah! Take him out. Oh shit! Scout! Yeah, you better run. And we're here with a spy friend. Oh! Shit! Fuck. <laughs> okay. Let's see that again. So we're just we just do that that this is is more funny. We're like dead, alright? Okay, so this is what happened. And we're like Okay, I got him. Ha! What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the slowest reaction time ever. Hold on, hold on, I gotta see it again, I gotta see it again. Okay, so we come up. And yeah, we do this. And we die. And it's like, yeah, I got him! Ha! Ah! <laughs> oh, yeah, so that's, um, you know, works pretty well against like snipers. It's a, g a great way to get your health back. And uh, we're gonna show some uh, five CP maps because uh, I think that is like where it's most reliant for both teams because you know both teams are all, like changing you know if they're attacking or defending and I think like using this is really a really good idea uh, to do so and um, especially if you get like some teamwork involved it's definitely gonna work out and it's gonna be really kick ass and the enemies are just gonna be like country's broken oh my god it's powerful. I really want to see it used in Highlander as well, because uh, it's just so good if used correctly. But is it more reliable than the shotgun? No. Because <laughs> the uh, shotgun, whenever you have ammo on it and you pull it out, it will do damage as long as you can hit your target. The scout here, these are numbered. We're going to move march forward here on cold front. Take out another pyro, we're with a medic here. Taking the time to reload, that is also something that is important to address when you play soldier. Take your time to reload your weapon, rocket launcher, god damn it, take your time. Reload is good. Taking out a scout in mid-air with some air shot magic. And we're now just in position, getting ready to make the push. We have a Kritzkrieg on another soldier. We have a scout behind us that nobody has really spotted but me. And then we reload and we kill him, yes. So the enemy has some kind of defense set up here. Yes, how unorthodox. They actually have a defense. So we're just gonna blow this horn here and attack! Uh, oh, sentry! Shit! Oh, okay. Contra does not give me any protection against sentries whatsoever. So we're just gonna do some more poking. Shoot, get some more health. And then we're gonna get out of there. Yes, and then we're gonna roll around to the other side. That's very important. Like, if you try to push from one side and you get denied, just fall back, reload, heal up, and try another side or try the same side again see if you can get an opening. That's like usually what you do. So I tried that way. It didn't really work. So we're just going to roll over to the middle one again and try that one again and see if we have an opening this time. And we kind of do. Demo man has to reload. That's when you kind of hit him. We get a uh, Uber coming in. Try to hit the engineer first from with splash damage from the back. 
reloading and doing a lot of damage. And here's the thing, like, I see this. Alright, this is the scene. This is where we're at. We're this floating little ghost. And currently there's, like, a medic with a Kritzkrieg and uh, using it on a weapon that can't be critzed. And there's a lot of red and stuff like that. And even though I usually always reload all my four rockets before blowing the horn, just because, like, oh shit, you're in trouble, I'm just gonna blow my horn and, uh, and assist you. And then we run on a point, we stand and we stack, and we win! Yay! The power of... Teamwork. ...is good. Excellent. Good. So... We're gonna look at another one. 5 TP push. With this, where we actually don't kill anyone with it at all. It's purely positional. And that is also something. Uh, let's see, how long is the duration on this thing? It, it, it lasts for 10 seconds. So for 10 seconds, you can run 40% faster, I think, as a soldier. Yeah, as a soldier, you run 40% faster. So for 10 seconds, you run 40% faster, which is a lot in, used in the right hands. So we're here on Battlelands. And oh, just gonna jump. Oh, I want some health back. Come here. Yeah, off with your head. Like, okay, check my back. Nobody there. Okay, blowing the horn and attack. Getting the medic. We can actually chase him down in these hallways where you normally can't really rock jump. Chasing him down wouldn't really have been able to get get in the way anyway. Keep in mind when you are active with this thing, you rock jump a lot further than you normally would. So we're like, okay, jump up here. Gotta be on this point. And cap in that. And then nobody is coming to defend, which is... Whoa! Pyro! Random crit rocket for the win! Jump back up! Everything's good. Easy operation. Yeah, just how I planned. I planned to get air blasted off and have a random crit hit you in the teeth. And there's a sniper there. I'm like, yeah, you can shoot your cleaner's carbine all you want. That thing doesn't really scare me. This isn't Call of Duty. Getting help from a demo man as well. Boosh, taking him out. And there we go. Just hanging out. Checking if it's spy. And shooting more rockets. Alright. More rockets. We have a demo man with us. We have a sniper, a couple of snipers. And attack! In small areas like this, having the additional speed boost really helps. Heavy's on the point, just gonna be healing up. This engineer punches us with his glove, not gonna happen. Run in. Positional and kicking ass. Doing pretty well. Yes. So let's look at some more defensive play with this, because you can use it on defense, you just have to use it very actively. It's kinda like... A good defense is a good offense. And do you know why that is? Why they say a good defense is a good offense is a good defense? Because when you attack really good, the enemies are going to be busy with your attack so they they can't attack you. Do, 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 do. Yes, just hanging out. Oh. Shooting the rockets, doing the splash damage. That's a good thing about soldier around corner. You can like shoot this, these rockets at the floor, and the targets can't really see you. So if they use our heavies and our fat, slow, and Russian, they can't really hit you. Ah, medic with quick fix, excellent. And we're gonna blow this horn. Attack! Yeah, shooting the rockets, shooting the rockets, attacking, getting close and personal. Sniper is gonna take you out. Scout. Ooh, there's a bunch of guys here. Okay, we're gonna use our speed to retreat, but our medic decides to attack for some reason. And we're gonna fall back up here, and oh no, an engineer with a mini sentry! How Imba, he takes two rockets to kill it. And the engineer just surfs away. On a health pack. Lucky man. So right now I'm just kind of, kind of baiting attention. Demo man comes up with the pan, not gonna happen. Rockets beats pan any day unless that pan gets a random crit. So we have quick fix popped on us, doing a lot of damage. You can see we're very active on this defense. Because the enemy team is doing the in, the very good strategy of attacking us one at a time, uh, giving us plenty of ammo and plenty of time to kill the rest of their team one by one. And then we blow the horn once again, and oh, Pyro is not the best air blaster we've seen, but uh, he'll get there eventually, because I remember playing 
on up forward. I couldn't really use any of those replays because they weren't really that good because there was Aparo there and he was like the last air blaster, man. He just reflected all my rockets and he was just really good, had really good reaction time and just generally shut me down pretty good. And ha! Take that! Come here. Ha! Take that. Double kill. Full health. Yes. Good. And this is something you should pay attention to whenever you play with others, is if someone wants to get your attention, they kind of just go in front of you and they're like, hey, pay attention to me, and use the in-game voices. So I'm going to try and do that with that with this heavy here, okay? So I'm like, go, 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 charge. Move out. And he just, I'm trying to get him with me. I want him to come with me. And he's like, all right, shotgun. Okay, go attack. Yeah. Is he with me? No, he's not. <laughs> so that's also the thing to look for. If you're a new newer player and some players are like standing in front of you and they're like using voice commands. Oh, boosh! Random grits for the win! Man, random grits are good when they're in my favor. Fucking pyros burning me, killing me, all that shit. Ugh. So that's like when you, you know that there's like... Mm, they, they're they not really receptive of what's going on. They're kind of just very, very focused on what they're doing. They have about a broad vision of this. So uh, even though you're standing right in front of them, you might stand on, you know, this side and they don't really see you. So let's see how this weapon deals with spawn camping because spawn camping is a legit strat that nobody ever complains about ever and is generally looked down upon because it means the team that got spawn camp defense pretty shit and they people just ran by anyway. So we're waiting. Pondering before we get moving, yes. Moving to the front. Shooting the rockets. Reloading the rockets actually, we have a double medic combo here. Pretty good. Sniper is about. We have a medic here who doesn't know to run in front, but that's okay. We take out the sentry anyway. Double heavy here. Gonna be... Wait, hang, hang on. Hang on. Okay, let's see it from this heavy's perspective. Okay, so this is this guy. Okay. So what he sees. He shoots. Comes a soldier, you can't really see us because you see the rocket launcher. And he shoots and he's like, I'm gonna shoot the... Oh, the guy in the back, he was like, yeah, shoot up. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Let's see where are we. Here we are. Oh, it's a sniper! Yeah, taking him out. Soldiers generally pretty good at shutting down snipers, not gonna lie. Not all I can do about them. And then we blow the horn and. Ha! Ah! Rockets to your feet. Killing you. Watching the spawn. Rocks jumping back up again. Hanging out on the top, yeah. Shooting rockets at nothing. Hanging out with the spy. Shooting down is generally pretty good. Oh no, air crit shot. But that's okay. Just look how good this is, just to shoot down. It's like Valve designed this spawn door to get spawn camped by soldiers. <laughs> you can literally stand on top of their spawn and just Shoot. Now we're dominating people and we're just waiting for the cart to go. The enemy team's not really doing anything. Yay, round of crit! Oh, crit's great because we win the round. Yay. Yay. Doesn't really work that well because you have to, you know, you, but you heal up, so it's good in that way, I guess. There we go. So now on upward, defense. Killing soldier. That was pretty weak. Weak as in low on health. We have a full charge. Crits for the win. Ran not random crits this time. Killing an invisible spy right in front of us. Medics get stabbed by another spy. We lose the crits, but I think we have the Contra buff at this time. Scout is... Predictable. And we kill him. So there we go. Ooh, another spy. Alright, so I think that spy survived, and this is what we call spy spotting, alright? So, I saw a spy uh, I thought was a spy, so uh, he ran up here. This way. So, as a spy, you know, if I were a spy, I would... Well, yeah, there he is. 
I don't know he's there, but I can assume he's like in this area. And that means like he is eventually gonna come towards the front lines here, so I'm just walking back here to look for him. Is that a spy? Yes, that's a spy. Take him out. One good way of checking if a uh, spy is using Dead Ringer or not is after you kill him, if your weapon refill after you pick up his weapon, if you get some ammo back. If you don't, he's Dead Ringing. If you do, he's dead. And uh, yeah, getting close and personal after blowing the horn doesn't really work when you get too close and just overwhelmed with enemy firepower when you're alone. So kind of like, it's really easy to get over eager with this weapon, because you're like, yeah, I got speed boost, but you actually don't do more damage. So it's not like, you know, the buff banner, if you really use the buff banner, you'd be like, yeah, more damage, yeah, I can kill shit faster. But this thing's like, you can survive a bit longer, but that's about it. And this scout, man, this is what I mean by, like, newer players sometimes are the hardest to hit. Like, let's just look at that again, like, in slow motion of the scout's mood. It's completely unpredictable because there there are no thoughts being f w thought by that guy. He's just like, I'm going to move this way. Now I'm going to stand here. I'm not going to stand over there. So we're going to look at this again. This doesn't have anything to do with the contrary. It's just that, okay, so first he goes up there. Okay, cool. And then he's like, all right. So here he is. So he's gonna slow it down a bit. So like, alright. Rock jump, and I'm gonna shoot you. And he moved as I shot. Okay, so he's gonna go... Alright, so he's standing... He stopped at the very edge. He, he, like, any other scout would've ran this way. And then he's like, coming down. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna shoot you. Yeah, up in the air. And then he jumps. And I miss fucking crit rocket. Because then he decides to move. Kills the medic with a random crit. And then he goes down again, and then we eventually get him. But man. That is pretty rough. It's kind of like those... It's not similar if you play Sniper, if you play against players who never really play. Th their movement is going to be completely unpredictable because there's like n no pattern whatsoever. So there we go. Uh, this is the replay I was mentioning earlier on uh, Badlands where we were just pure positioning. The previous one wasn't that, but this one is just pure positioning. So there we go. We have a quick fix medic with us. We have another soldier, so uh, we can do a lot of damage here. I'm uh, consciously trying to stick close to him. I'm just jumping out, uh, doing the rockets. The rocket jumping on walls. Generally pretty good to get a lot of distance pretty quickly. Another soldier here, flanking him from the back. Scout comes in with a candy cane, not gonna happen. And we're about to cap this point, and I'm like, yeah, man, why, do, why don't we run faster for 20 seconds? Yeah! And we don't have to rock jump, we have our medic with us, and boosh! We get on this point really fast. And this is how it could be used competitively, you know? They would be like, oh, totally broken and bullshit, uh, whatever. It's good, it's great. Fell down, that's okay. Scouts coming up, coming down. Spies all around. Rock jumping, all right. So we lost the medic. Uh, he's there. Okay, he's not a spy. That's a spy. Okay, shoot. The engineer stands in a corner for some reason. Okay, so we're in position. Blow the horn. Oh, it's a devil man. Okay, quickly, attack! Sentry, take it out! Sentry gone! Come here! Yeah! Half side Tochi, full health, excellent! Is that on the point? Whee! You are dead. Not big surprise, I win! Conjurer wins the game. We are the best. No protest. So, we're gonna move on to the... Yeah, I think actually, yeah, this is the last replay of the day, I think. Yep. Last replay of the day is going to be Gozes on. It's going to be finishing us off here today. So hopefully you've gotten a good idea of how this weapon is used. Best with teamwork. Mediocre uh, by yourself. Works best with heavies and pyros. And can all often work really well with soldiers as well. Or if you could get like 12 people in the giant death ball and just kill massive uh, shit. So here it goes on. Doing the crits. Doing the damage. And, uh, yeah. Doing fairly well. Taking out the medic. His medic taking out the spy. Surviving using the conjurer. Just peeking about. 
Because after a while, if you use this a lot and it becomes like your primary unlock, you're just going to look at players like, you know, spies and snipers and engineers to be like, Oh yeah, dude, that's like free Conjurer charge up, man. I'm going to get me some of that. Yes. Taking high ground advantage, pretty good to do as a soldier. Shooting down, always easier than shooting up. Because the enemy just kind of has to take whatever you're dishing out of uh, rockets and bombs and stuff like that. Uh, but keep in mind, this thing, you know, with the Contra, like I said, it's not as reliable as the shotgun. You should only use this if you really want to have, you know, some fun and if you can, you know, count on your team to, do, like, really, really, really work really well because this is a team boosting item. And if you don't have a good teamwork or good synergy, it's not going to work that well. So another, uh, oh, another crits barrage about to come here. Boosh! Look at all this death. There's no escaping Gozes on, except you could have escaped, but he, that heavy, he was like, do or die. And it's going to be die eventually. So rocket jumping. Pretty good. Taking out a sniper with another random crit. Because random crits are fair. Contrary to what the uh, other people will have you believe, he's with this other heavy. You can see he's trying to be like, yeah, let's go! But keep in mind, you run faster than the heavy does. And, uh, yeah. There we go. Yes. Hanging out, has a medic with a full crit streak once again, and we've just been seeing those on just pretty much roll around here. So we're just gonna speed things a little bit up, because there's a couple of times where there's a little downtime where nothing is really happening because the attackers are just dead. So there we go. Back for some more ammo and health. Taking high ground once again, blue team is gonna get absolutely uh, blown to bits. Not a lot they can do about it, except die. Well, the the good like how do you stop a contra or soldier? <laughs> you just at any point in time just kill him. <laughs> he takes the same amount of damage as you give him. So, headshots and backstabs are usually pretty good answers to that. Contra once again, Chris Krieg, yeah, shooting all around, shooting, 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 rockets, Pan is not mightier than the rocket, we see that before, and, uh, hanging out, another sniper, taking him out with another crit rocket, it's probably the same sniper as before, he's getting mad, I guess. Because being mad at the game makes you better? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can't be calm if you want to be a Super Saiyan. So I guess the same thing applies here. You gotta get mad. Power up. Blowing the horn once again with Pyros this time. And Kritzkrieg, and then you eventually die. Yes! So that's the Conjurer. Hopefully you've gotten some insight in how it works, some strength and weaknesses. Its strength being, like, it, I guess its strength and weakness is that it requires teamwork and some sort of strategy and some kind of synergy and positional awareness and how it works, because if you play with players who've never used it before, they don't really know, but uh, I think uh, it's definitely more viable now. I think I'll be using it a lot more because it's uh, it's really fun, especially with if you have a couple of friends and and you start doing like the death ball things because if other players start to see that like death ball heavy pyro soldier demo pyro pretty much your entire team in a big ball and a contra wins everything P other people are going to be doing that as well and then you're going to be seeing a spread of that yeah, excuse me so uh let's see if we can figure out the topic for uh it's not going to be next week but it's going to be the week after that because I'm actually going out of town on some family birthday. Somebody's getting old and we're celebrating it. So let's see here. If I can find it. 
Yes, future topics. So we've done a couple of few. We've done a, a few of these. A lot of them got changed. So we're just done a heavy episode. So I think we're gonna do. Hmm, let's do a demo man episode. Let's do the loose cannon. Okay, next week or the week after next week is gonna be the loose cannon because the loose cannon got a buff. And that's what we're gonna be doing. So with that, I would like to end the show today with a little story because me, you know me, I have the worst r daily rhythm ever. I go to bed at 6 a.m. and wake up at 6 p.m. So that's what's th why the episode was delayed yesterday because I woke up when it was supposed to start. Which really sucked. So instead of a technical problem, it was more of a biological problem in that regard. But uh, because I sleep so late, and I always try to wake up at like 12 or 1 p.m., something like that, I always go to sleep again, like right afterwards. And I have like the craziest dreams because I remember it. And I remember in this dream was actually pretty uh, special because I was playing TF2 and then Robin Walker joined. Even though he's not part of, you know, TF2, he works in Dota now. And, like, he knew where, who I was, and we were doing the I was doing Contra replays, because I've been doing those for, those for, like, two days straight. And I asked him, like, like, do you see this? And I stood in front of him, and I did, like, the crouch jump jitter. And he's like, oh, yeah, I wasn't aware of that. But we're not going to fix that. We're going to port Team Fortress to um, Source 2. Which is a thing, you know. Left 4 Dead 3 is going to be on Source 2 because we that got leaked, kind of confirmed in a way. And I also thought I mentioned like, hey, you should fix the sc like scope canceling thing for Sniper, make it so you can't do that because it's better if you if you can't like leaves you more open and for counters and stuff like that. And he was like, no, we we like snipers being a circle jerk. And then I woke up. Yes. So Source 2 is definitely going to be a thing. So I'm hoping that Team Fortress 2 is getting uh, a port because Team Fortress 2 hasn't gotten an optimization patch in forever and the game runs horribly right now. I'm sure, uh, like a lot of you, the game uses way more resources now than what it should. Because I think the way they load hats in the game, memory-wise, is not properly optimized. Because what I think they do, I think they load all the items in your memory and something like that. So, yeah. So, next topic for next week. Loose Cannon. Demo Man. Submit those replays. Double Dunk. Double Badunk Dunk all over the place. And uh, thank you guys for watching.